We can see in the definitions above that a direct variation is a function where the ratio of the two variables is constant. In other words, it's a very basic type of linear function. Another common way to think of this is that as x increases, so does y. And although it's not always that simple when we start to have negative signs or fractions, um, but that's a good place to start. A direct variation can be written in the form y equals kx, where k is called the constant of variation. Now, the reason we study this now, when we've just finished our lesson on y equals mx plus b, is if you put these side by side, you can see that y equals kx looks very much like a y equals mx plus b. And notice the absence of a plus b. We talked in the previous lesson about the fact that the only number that you can add and have nothing happen is zero. So a direct variation is a linear relationship that always passes through the origin. The y-intercept will always be zero. One of the things we're asked to be able to do is to determine by looking at an equation whether or not it represents a direct variation. And then if it does represent a direct variation, we're asked to find the constant of variation. Well, we can see that the direct variation form is y equals kx which means that we always need to solve for y in order to determine if something is a direct variation. So if I have 2x minus 3y equals 1, I would start by subtracting 2x from each side. And I have negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 1. If we divide both sides by negative 3, we have y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third. Because remember that 3 divides both terms. When I look at that and I compare it to y equals kx, notice there's a number here where we should just have 0. So this is not a direct variation because it doesn't follow the format. This would not pass through the origin. Now as we look at the second one, we're going to subtract 2x from each side again. So it starts the same way because this equation is very similar. 0 minus 2x is just negative 2x, since negative 2x plus 0 is redundant. Then we divide both sides by negative 3, and y equals 2 thirds x. Now when I compare this to y equals kx, I see that all the pieces line up. This is in the y equals kx format, and the number 2 thirds is in the position of k. So yes, this is a direct variation and we can determine its constant with a constant of two-thirds. In problem two, we're going to use the idea of direct variation to help us solve problems. The weight, of an object, the weight an object exerts on a scale varies directly with the mass, mass of the object. All right, so the weight varies directly with the mass. The way this wording is set up, weight will be in the position of y. It will be the thing that's alone. Whatever it's varying directly with will be on the other side. So mass is going to be the input while weight is the output. And that makes sense with what we probably already know from science. Your mass is the same no matter where you are, but your weight depends on gravity. So your weight on the Earth is different than your weight on the moon. It makes sense that mass would be the independent variable or the cause, while weight is the dependent variable or the effect. If a bowling ball has a mass of six kilograms, so notice they're telling us a mass, the scale reads 59, so notice now they're telling us a weight. Using those two numbers, we can write 59 equals k times 6. Well, when we look at that, we realize k is now the only variable. If we divide both sides by 6, k is equal to 59 sixths, which is sort of a strange constant of variation, but it can be a fraction just like slopes can be fractions. So when it asks us to write an equation for the relationship between mass and weight, it's going to take the form of this original equation we wrote, but it's going to use this constant of variation. 
So the equation that models the relationship is W equals 59 sixths M. And that's the answer to the problem. Number three says for each table, use the ratio Y over K to tell whether Y varies directly with X. Now let's step back for a minute and think about why we can use that particular ratio. Remember we have Y equals KX. That's a direct variation. That's the basic setup. If I were to solve this equation for K to get K alone in the equation, I would divide both sides by X. So notice the constant of variation is defined as Y divided by X. And we all know that the word constant means always the same. So since constant means always the same, the constant of variation has to always be the same throughout the table of values. So we're going to test this table to see if it represents a direct variation. We want to see if y over x, which is k, is constant. So 2 divided by negative 1 equals negative 2. I need to check the next one. Negative 16 divided by 8 is also equal to negative 2. Now I can't just stop there and assume it's going to work throughout the table. However many pairs of values I have in my table, I need to do that many tests. So now I have negative 40 divided by 20. That again is negative 2. Since this value is constant, is always the same, I can say, yes, it is a direct variation. My evidence is the fact that the constant of variation is in fact constant. When we find that to be true, the problem asks me to follow up by writing an equation for the direct variation. Conveniently, the work we did to see whether there was a constant of variation is the same work we would need to do to come up with the equation. Remember, we're working in this y equals kx format and that we now know that k is negative 2. So the direct variation is y equals negative 2x.